All right, so today I'm the lovely, wonderful gaming Metarox. We're going to be taking a look at my top 10 RPG games of 2019. Now, you guys are going to be like, okay, some of these games are going to be classified under franchises. That does, that means like if there is, for example, like Call of Duty, I'm talking the entire Call of Duty, I'm talking Call of Duty Black Ops, talking, you know, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, talking Call of Duty in general, you know, whatever's been released in that entire franchise. Um, now, some of you guys are going to be like, well, there's a game on here that's only, there's only been one, and there's only been one game released, but there's a second one on its way, or whatever. Whatever. I'm only talking about the games I've played, but generally most of it, most of it. So, and as you guys are wondering why there is a black screen, well, as our top ten start growing, growing, you'll start seeing different games start popping up and start growing our list. So, these aren't going to be saying, oh, number ten is this, number nine is this, number eight is this. It's just going to be, as we go through it, you'll start seeing the different games and different images, and you can kind of say, okay, at the very top of, at the very top, top, of, over there, um, it's going to start going from the top of your screen, it's going to go from left to right, and going to keep going. So we'll, we'll start, you'll, you'll get, you'll get it when I get there. So the first game was released on the PSP. Um, I played it for a long time. It was um, I played the demo and demo at first, and then then you know I started getting into more of the PSP era because this was this was kind of one of the toughest, one of the best RPGs on the PSP that I know of, that I've played. Um, and that is Lord of Arcana, or how, however you guys like to pronounce it. Um, Lord of Arcana, um, it's one of those things that, it, it's a Square Enix game, and it's one of those companies that I do enjoy for them being such a wonderful influence into the series. Now, the RPG is element it's like it really brings into like those MMO RPGs RPGs but it feel is what it feels like and it feels like it's such a great storyline upon it but no I didn't get into much of it because you know I didn't play a lot of the game I only played the demo and I own the game now but I don't play a lot of you know I didn't get to play a lot of the demo a lot of the game because I my PSP broke at the time, at the time I was starting to play this, and, you know, I just haven't really had the opportunity to continue to play for it. Maybe, maybe if I got into it a lot more, maybe it might be down into a later list. But, see, I don't, haven't played very many RPGs. I only have, like, ten on this list. Eleven. But some of them are, some of the RPGs are, aren't on this list because they're um, Steam games that I just haven't touched them at all. Um, there's one on, there's a few on here that I have played via Steam. But the next one here is a recent game I started playing, and it's kind of an ARPG. It's similar to, well, it's it's kind of interesting because it's called Torchlight, and Torchlight is a game that I really have kind of appreciation for it, but is it good as Diablo? No. Torchlight's not as great as Diablo, as Diablo in my sense, Be but, you know, you know, Torchlight, it, it's got, it's got that same elements, but it brings it to maybe a general audience who, maybe their parents are allowing them to play M-rated games, and they have the, the aspiring to, maybe they want to try something similar to that, and they just don't like that. Um, a lot of that blood, a lot of that gore, and all that jazz. They can play Torchlight because it is rated T, and it's it kind of follows the same things where you have this main town, kind of like in the first one, where in remember Diablo you had Tristram. Well, I can't remember the exact name of this one because I just started playing it with um, 
with the Xbox Game Pass, with the Xbox Gold on my Xbox 360. And, but you have that kind of same thing where you start there, but then you go down deep into a mine. And it really, and it's really kind of, kindly plays homage because you can upgrade those up and suck at those items. It's so much similar to Diablo. But Diablo was the one that I think was better in in a lot of different terms. Um, but that's not to say that number 8 on this list is called Legend of Mysteria. I've played this and it's one of the great, now it's one of the few best RPG maker games on this list. Legend of Mysteria is it's it's better if I just tell it to you right off the Steam page to kind of give you guys that um, it's kind of the same creators who did Chosen and a few other a few other little things, but it's easier for me to to do it off the um, strip page. An exciting JRPG by the winter of the Minoria as legends grow. As sentients grow between factions, mages, you are inflamed for the murder of Digmont. Solve the mystery behind the assassination, or risk a war that could send the world into chosen, into chaos for millennia. Sorry, it's hard to read it when it's not so close up to my face. But, you know, it's one of those things that I loved Final Fantasy as as kind of one of those things is like it's so much similar to find to somewhat a final fantasy but it has its own twists its own mechanics in the game it's just like a typical jrpg the story is okay it's not great but it could always be a little bit better now you guys are going to be like okay this is sitting here at number seven diablo yes i think diablo is such a is a really great game. I loved the first game, first game, um, and I'm glad that they approved on it in Diablo 2, and I really love Diablo 2, but the only, and I loved it because each one has its own unique, unique relevance into the game, like, you know, Diablo 2, you actually had more, like, a big, huge set of realms to explore, to explore. It had, the story was vastly improved. I didn't quite, still didn't quite get Diablo 1, and kind of quite nowadays, you really can't get Diablo 1 to work very well, very well, because it was turn-based, it felt, it felt like that, but it was more of an, a live action, like a open world, world where it's, you slash monsters, you do things like that, like an A action RPG nowadays. Um, the only reason why it doesn't sit up here, sits here at number 8, and not sits more down, sits at number 7, 7, is just because Diablo 3, it doesn't have that same feeling that Diablo 1 and 2 gave. Gave It It doesn't have, it feels more like it's not a, it doesn't have that same feeling. It, it, feels, it feels more lighthearted in some areas of the game. That doesn't mean that Diablo 1 and 2 had those, but it felt more dark. It felt more, um, things like that. Oh, I fly. And I love the classes that they created. I love everything that they have in, involved in it. Like, I loved the archer, the, the mages. I love everything that they use. Now, I haven't played Diablo in a while, in a while, so... So bear with me, I don't know every class, but I know the Amazon is good, I know that there's um, the Barbarian, and a few of these other classes that really, really were great for classes. The story of Tristram and, and fighting off the devil, and you know, it, it, feels, it feels like it's one of those great RP, ARPG games. games. If I was doing an ARPG list, it'd probably be not number one. Number one. Now... Saying at number six, I'm not for sure if I can if you can consider this an RPG or not, um, and that is Spyro. Now I'm not talking the remastered versions, um, just because I haven't really. I only sat down and watched them, watched the game. I haven't really delved into playing it, but I do enjoy the first three 
the original Spyro games, and they were somewhat of great, like, like, I love playing as a dragon when you can actually shoot flames and fire and do all these diff different monsters, get rid of all these different monsters and different things, and find these different eggs to save this world, to save a world. Well, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. So I was up to his rage, was pretty good, you know, um... I, I liked I liked that I've beat that game and it was it was one of my proud moments that I've beaten a few games in my entire life I haven't beat I haven't beaten many games and and I, that's say besides the point that I just sit down and I you know look I'm trying to beat these games but I have I have time sometimes I do have time to actually to actually play some of these games and sit down and sit down and, and actually play them but you know I haven't beat many games in my in my lifetime um, and that's just to say that you know there's some some problems that I didn't maybe that's just maybe it's because I've seen the remastered version and you know it's it's a lot better but you know the only thing is, is sometimes like the first battle it felt in it it felt like that it was missing a few things but that was their first game um, you no, know, the story was was there, but it it just didn't. I just didn't quite get the story in in the games. I didn't quite understand them, send them in a way. But that's it's just beside the point. That it also being able to use those gems to buy things. Like I thought that it would have more more ways to use to use those gems and buy in in the games. But that's just beside the point. Beside the point that the game did great gameplay, um, great level design, uh, great, you know, great art too. And sitting here at number, oh, and I didn't show that, the hat, sorry, there we go. Um, now sitting here at number five is a game that only takes roughly about an hour to play, maybe not, maybe even if that. And that is called Lonely in the Winter. Now, Lonely in the Winter is a game that, if you've played typical Final Fantasy style of, of RPG, take that game and condense it to about maybe an hour, maybe two. I could easily complete this on a in a live stream. I could complete this in one in one YouTube video, and I wouldn't have to spread it out like these so-called other RPG games. Um, the all oh, the thing is, is that the only thing that I didn't like about it is that it just felt too short. When I looked at the game and I was like, okay, that looks like sounds like a good game, and it was only an hour long. It felt way too short, um, and that's the only reason why it doesn't sit sit at a higher. That's why it doesn't sit higher. But it is still a great, great game. And now a lot of you guys are going to be like. A lot of it here is most of it's going to coming be coming from console gaming, um, except for like some of these are going to be like console based games. So just to bear with that, this next one was released way back when the PS One was around. Um, as you guys can see, Spyro was released back then too. But this one was more of an M rated game. Now I've played this not on the PlayStation. PlayStation. I played this when it was out on the PSP, and that is the Parasite Eve games. Um, now, Parasite Eve is a take Final Fantasy and turn it to an M-rated game and make it like that, but also make it so that it's set in New York, it's set in, like, a starting of the game. I've played a little bit of it, and it's still a good game because I do like my RPG, my Final, my Square Enix games, and Parasite Eve is one of the, now, mind you, back then it was by Squaresoft. But, um, I'm not 100% for sure if Squaresoft is now Square Enix, but, you know, Parasite Eve is set as, like, a cop kind of detail, and, and kind of the basic generally is, like, at the very first, like, going into this theater, and you have, you're trying to defund, defend these, trying to kill off all these big alienated alien creatures, and it's, and it's bloody, and it's gory, and it's, it's an M-rated game in that life, in the, for that reason, and it's just really... It's really great. Now, it might it might have changed if I have gotten into too long. For, 
I've played two. It could have been early. It could have been late, later in the game. I just haven't dove into number two yet, and I haven't really got into much of the game. But it's still a great game. I've seen some gameplay of it too, so that's why it's kind of like I really enjoy it. It sits here at number four. Now sitting here at number three. Now I've played this game as a kid. It's it's, it's like forty dollars now for Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. It's still a good game. It's one of those things, it's one of those games that are tactical, um, tactical turn battle, turn-based RPG, RPGs, geez, but it's also where you can see what's being there, like a tactics, tactical style of, like, XCOM is another, is another one that I could have probably put on this list, on this list, and you could probably be right, but XCOM is just not one of my favorite games. Is not a great game, one of my favorite games at the moment. And but Fire Emblem Emblem, I've played it I've played it way back when it was released on the GameCube. GameCube. I've enjoyed enjoyed those kinds of games because it's it's kinda allows me to pick and choose where I want to go for each of the 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 games in the way that you know, I could pick, pick tactics, and I had to be careful about what I chose, what I chose, and what I could do. Because, you know, I could play as this knight, this knight, that could die, you know, in the next turn. You know, I don't know. It, You lose that character, you lose it forever. Ever. And that's why Final Moon sets up here as number three, is because it really made me think about strategy in a way that, that would put me in on edge, and and I don't know if you guys would consider this as an RPG, but I do because it's technically Final Fantasy also has that kind of style too, and it has all other types of games. But sitting here at number two, this was one of the best games. I wish would get a remake. Remake. Now there is nothing wrong with Legend of Dragoon to my knowledge. Okay. But the only problem is, the reason why Legend of Dragoon doesn't sit at number one is just there's not more, more games of that style. Style. And it, it, it's really great because I really get to choose additions. Like, I get to mash buttons in, in battle, you know? It's, it's, you know, some other games do that, but it's like, it's like it really puts Legend of Dragoon on the map for me. For me. And it's, it's really interesting because... Because I get to play with dragons. I get to... Um, one of my favorite things. I love dragons. In some ways. In some ways. I do like them. I just... It's just not... The, and the man, not having magic in the game is really great. Having the... The use of items to throw and use like a spark net. You know? It's an I, it's a it's an item that I think, think is really great. And only being able to hold storage of 32 items really makes me think about what I need to have in stock and in store. Store. Number, now before we get to number one, there is a couple of games that I'm not going to show here on this list here, and that is going to be Chosen RPG and XCOM. Okay, you guys know what XCOM is? If you guys don't know what cho the Chosen RPG is, go look it up on Steam. You guys will figure it out. And... You guys can go from there. Now, number one, I know, all time on this list, you guys, I did the top ten video on this previously, and you guys, if you guys can figure that out, figure that out, that is Final Fantasy. Now, I only I'm showing Final Fantasy, the image of Final Fantasy VII, isn't because I like it, but it's because Final Fantasy is one of those games that I have aspirations for aspirations and it's one of those games that you know I played I've played a wide variety of Final Fantasy and I played Final Fantasies 1 I played um, 4 I played 5 I played the start of 6 but never really got into 6 never really got into 1 nor f I played some of 4 um, I played 7 got almost all the way done played 8 beat that game played 9 um, I played seven, eight, nine, also on my PSP, um, where I where I played them now. 
Um, I played eight on the place seven and eight on the PlayStation. Um, I've played, you know, 10, 12, I've beaten 12. I'm on the process of doing 13. I'm not quite finished. I am stuck, um, close. I'm on stuck and close, stuck on a boss in, in number three on chapter, on like the, la the third to the last chapter, maybe fourth. I'm not for sure. And I've played 14. Now, you guys are going to say that Final Fantasy, there's a lot of things that are that have problems with all of these games. There's nothing wrong wrong with any of these games, to my knowledge. But some of you guys might have some things that are that you like better in that game, or like, like in different areas. And that's okay. We all have our own opinions. I want to know what are your top 10 RPG games. RPG games. Because, you know... RPGs are out there. There's a whole ton of them. You know, I just listed a ten. I just listed a whole bunch of RPGs that you guys could go and start playing right now, right now if you wanted to. Some of these, like Torchlight, Diablo, um, Final Fantasy, Legend of Mysteria, Lonely in the Winter Night, Spyro. You can play all of Fire Emblem. You can play all of those right now if you own a Switch, own a P or own a PC. You know. Torchlight too. Um, you might not be able to play Parasite Eve unless you have have you can put download buy it on the PS PlayStation Store. You can play Legend of Arcana if you had a PSP. You know, these are all some of the great games games that are out there, you know. It, it's one that I enjoy and I hope you guys did enjoy knowing that of my top ten RPGs. And if you guys did enjoy, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also the video on your over here, over here is going to show you a video to the the previous top tens video that I did did on an on a Pacific RPG game. This one over here is going to show you case the fact that you are that YouTube would want you to enjoy. So we'll see you guys in the next one.